childhood friend and photographer told Escobar's unknowns. Edgar Jimenez Mendoza, Pablo Escobar's childhood friend and photographer, said that he believes the Colombian drug lord was not killed, but that he took his own life. Edgar Jimenez Mendoza, the world-famous drug lord and photographer of Pablo Escobar, who was once the leader of the Medellin cartel in Colombia and who was with him until the end of his life, talked about his memories with Escobar. Writer Edgar Jimenez Mendoza, nicknamed El Chino who shared Escobar's unknowns with the AA correspondent, said that he met Escobar at the age of 13, when he was in high school. Jimenez stated that after studying in the same class with Escobar for three years, he had never met with him for 15 years, said. Explaining that he saw Escobar again in 1980, when he was the fifth richest person in the world according to Forbes magazine, Jimenez said that he talked to him years later, thanks to a friend. Jimenez said that Escobar met with him at the famous Hacienda, Naples, farm when he became the world's biggest drug lord. He hired me to take pictures of him. Then I became his personal photographer, stating that Escobar took photos such as family photos, birthdays, weddings, family parties, including the political campaign process, Jimenez said that he took the last photos of Pablo with his family on his son's birthday. Jimenez stated that the government, the U.S. and the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency had been fighting Pablo Escobar for 10 years, saying, The first main difference that distinguishes Pablo from other drug Barons is that he is the most powerful man in drug trafficking, and the second is that he is the only baron who has declared war on the state as an unprecedented person in history. Pablo had two opposite sides. It was evil. Some people in his neighborhood were very attached to Pablo. You could see his picture everywhere, but for the victims of the war, Pablo was no better than the devil. Pointing out that hundreds of innocent people lost their lives in the state's fight against Escobar, and other criminal organizations, Jimenez said, important people were kidnapped and taken hostage, the streets were unsafe, bombs were constantly exploding. Many innocents died in Pablo's fight against the cartels. Explaining that Escobar built dozens of houses during the political campaign for people living in very bad conditions, Jimenez said, of course, I took pictures of these actions, as the person closest to me, said. Recalling that many books have been written about Escobar and that many projects have been made that reflect his life into movies, Jimenez said, there are many historical inaccuracies in Netflix's Narcos series. For example, incomplete information in a scene where they describe the capture of the Palace of Justice and its relationship with the M-19 guerrilla. I see Hollywood movies reflecting Pablo's life as disconnected from reality, he said emphasizing that many business people and politicians wanted to do business with him. Especially in the 80s due to Pablo's wealth, Jimenez noted that everything started to change when Guillermo Cano, director of El Espectador newspaper, revealed that Pablo was a drug smuggler. Referring to the statements his brother made to journalists that day after Escobar's death, Jimenez said, Pablo's brother Marina said, if you think you have ended the drug trade and violence in this country with Pablo's death, you are very wrong. 29 years after Pablo's death, drug trafficking continues, he said. Jimenez stated that there are various claims about how Escobar died and said. Police Colonel Agalar said he killed Pablo himself, and in the second claim, the DEA said, we killed him. But Pablo's family says that Pablo committed suicide, and I personally believe it more. He said he would never allow himself to be captured alive. After Pablo's death, some of his properties were expropriated by the state, while others were taken away from his wife by the Cali cartel.